right, we've uh, launched our natural gas or methane filled balloon and we can see obviously that methane floats and that's not surprising because CH4 has a molar mass of 16 which is less than 29. Another fun demonstration I like to do is to fill soap bubbles with methane. Now above it I have a torch so there's a Bunsen burner welded on the end of this pole and we're going to have some extra fun here because we're going to see not only do methane filled soap bubbles float they also burn. So let's go ahead and turn on the gas here. Get some of our... There we go. Let's see if we can get that into the flame. If you were here in person, you could really feel the heat coming off of that. So methane with about half the density of air floats very nicely. You could actually fill a balloon with methane as we did before, and they float very well, but it is, as you can see, quite flammable. So methane is lighter or less dense than air, and it's flammable. It's not the only gas. Right over here, we have a tank of hydrogen. So let's take a moment and I'm going to hook up our hydrogen tank and let's see how hydrogen filled bubbles behave compared to methane. All right, I've got the uh, hydrogen tank now attached to my bubble trumpet, which is what this little guy is called. Hydrogen, of course, only has a molar mass of two, so it's eight times less dense than methane. And that means, of course, it's going to float pretty fast. So I'm going to have to be rather quick on the draw here, so to speak. I'll go ahead and blow some hydrogen through here. So let's see if we can get a hydrogen bubble. Okay, here we go. Going to go fast. Oop, missed the flame. It is a challenge because it is very low in density. There we go. Got our little bit of pop there. Let's try another one here. You get a little more of a pop with hydrogen because it's much more flammable and explosive than natural gas. Let's see if we can get one more here. Whoop, we missed that one. Hydrogen bubbles do move fast. Now normally I would have someone in here helping me. They would be holding this torch and chasing the bubbles, but I'm going to have to try to do this on my own here. Whoa, that was a good one. What happened there is the bubble popped on the way up. It mixed with some oxygen in the air, made it a much more explosive mixture, sort of like what happened in the Pringles cans we did earlier in the semester. We're going to try in a moment to blend some hydrogen and oxygen in the bubble, and if we do it correctly, it's going to make quite a fire. All right, we're going to uh, get a little more interesting now because we're going to try to blend hydrogen and oxygen together in the same soap bubble. Sort of like we did in the Pringles can demonstration, but in the Pringles can we had air, which is only 20% oxygen. This time we're using pure oxygen. This can be a bit loud if I get it just right, so I'm going to be wearing this hearing protection just to be safe here. The uh, Ratio of the hydrogen and oxygen, you may remember from back in chapter four, we had that nice big reaction up on the board there, was 2H2 plus 1O2. We want a two to one ratio. I'm going to try to estimate that ratio by looking at the size of the bubbles. So let's see how good a job I can do. Just to be safe, of course, I am going to put on my hearing protection. There we go. So we'll start with the hydrogen. Let me just blow it out a little bit here. All right. So let's start out by putting some hydrogen in a bubble. This should be two-thirds. All right, now let's try some oxygen. Okay. 
Whoa, ho, ho. that was pretty good. I think I'm going to stop on that note. I don't know how loud that was for you guys, but I could hear it pretty well even through my hearing protection. So if we get just the right blend there, we can get quite a loud explosion.